Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. And today I thought we'd do a little walk around of my L322 Range Rover Overland. That's what I've been using on my adventures. It's a 2004 Range Rover with a BMW 4.4 litre V8 engine in it. Uh, it's pretty standard. I've done nothing to it modification wise, apart from the roof tent, obviously the obvious what you can see. Um, it started out as my daily vehicle. So I never actually planned on using this as an overland vehicle. It wasn't, uh, it was never the plan. Um, it was my daily vehicle. I've had it for like, I've had it for about eight years. And the only reason why I ended up using it, because I did actually buy a Toyota Land Cruiser and that was going to be my overland vehicle when I decided to start getting into overlanding, camping and the outdoor life, I decided to buy a Toyota Land Cruiser. And like I say, this was my daily and the Land Cruiser had some problems with it. Had some gearbox issues that I never, never really got sorted for a long time. And it was in and out of the garage trying to get the, trying to get the issues sorted. And uh, this tent on the top, this is a, this is a Roofness Condor XL and that was on order and it had been imported by a company from America and I was waiting on this and then the guy phoned me and said your tent's here and I was like okay well the Land Cruiser still isn't ready so I decided to drive down in this and when I drove down in this I said to the chap, if it goes on this, it's staying on it. So yeah, that's kind of how that happened. Um, it just went on there and I ended up going out and it actually fitted really well and I quite liked the way it looked. So <laughs> this then became my overlanding vehicle. I got the Land Cruiser back and that was then used for six months and I tried to love it. I didn't really love it because yeah, I'm a, I'm a Range Rover fan really at heart. and. Uh, I've had them for years and I really loved it. So as soon as I drove it, that was it. I was like, yeah, I'm keeping this. The only planned modification I was going to do was I was going to change the wheels because it originally had these 22s on it, which are not, not suitable for, well, not suitable for any off-road use anyway. I mean, they're okay on the road. Brilliant on the road, actually, because they've got pretty scorpions uh, all seasons and they've actually been really good in the snow, really good in the ice and um, really good in all weathers, actually the best tyres I've, I've used um, in an on-road situation. But um, yeah, I've not used them off-road. It's only been in a little bit of mud here and there, but nothing it can't handle because obviously, you know, out of the box, these things are brilliant anyway, so you don't really need to, you know, do anything to them. But obviously for any serious off-roading, that little soy ball isn't gonna cut it, is it? It's just gonna, <laughs> well, Forgive the pun, but it will get cut. Yeah, so plan was to go back to 20s because I can only get 20s on with those brakes. So I've got the big, I've got the big Brembo supercharged brakes on it. Oh, actually, yeah, that's what I did put on. That's the only mod I did. Actually, no, I did a few more mods than that because it's an 04. I facelifted it. I forgot all about that. Yeah, it's got a 2012 facelift, as you can see. Any Land Rover fan out there is probably going, what you want about? It's not a 2004, but it is actually a 2004. And yeah, that's my, uh, <laughs> that's my beastie really. That's the one. Um, let me have a little, let me show you what's in the back. All right, so what we got in the back. One thing I love about this, Drop down tailgate, cooker just goes on there and you've got a nice little table to cook with. There's my fridge, it's not, not currently turned on, it's not on a pull, I just literally pull it out, pop it up when I need it, nothing in it at the moment. And I've got in there, I have a solar controller because on top of the roof nest is a 100 watt solar panel so what I did is in there can't really see it but under there if 
I can pull this out. Maybe I can, maybe I can pull the tab and you can actually have a look. Second battery in there. And that's obviously connected up to this. So this panel here uses the second battery here. So I can charge stuff off the back. I can change, you know, when I'm at the back of the vehicle, that's what these leads are for. And this was just, this, this was what used to be where the battery was. So I cut it down to fit. So it sort of fits in there and I can keep, you know, hand gel and, and fire lighters and anything matches, whatever in there. And I, everything charge off, off, off this. So I've got these leads, I just sort of tucked them into there and I can just charge stuff at the back. So everything's charged off that second battery. There's a, there's a, a 12 volt point, a 12 volt point that's in the back originally on these and what I did with that is I connected that up to the second battery as well so I normally put the fridge into that but currently what's in that is the um, you can't see it let me go around to the other side what that is is a dash cam but like in those new defenders this dash cam is the one of the ones that's goes over your mirror and I've actually got the camera the rear camera for that is there so and that helps reversing because I leave the shelf in and I normally stack this with stuff so all my chairs and all my gear tables fold away tape fold you know fold away tables they all go on here on this they all go on that shelf as does the water keep my water on there that's always handy because you've got a little tap and you can just turn the tap on and you can just put your cups underneath there um, and you've got plenty of space and so at the minute I've got nothing in there I've took everything out because I was doing some work on it I've just I've just rebuilt the compressor the air compressor was getting a bit tired it's taking ages for the suspension to work so I, uh, I rebuilt that but yeah it's, there's a lot of space there's a lot of space to store I can basically get everything I need in there so what we can do now is we can do um I'll show, we can do a, like a walk around on the tent. I'll show you the tent. I'll deploy the tent and show you how easy that is to actually to actually get out. Yeah, I was planning on sleeping in the vehicle as well at some point on the back, but I never got around to finishing the platform that I was building. essential bit of kit for this because it's so high. Actually I need to drop suspension. Got to drop the suspension before you before you even attempt it. And it's still high.
as you can see that's the tent deployed it's the condor xl did it mate right next to a canal yeah it looks good doesn't it yeah it's nice nice little sleep up there yeah next to a canal look lovely little spot this is got nice weather for it as well because all the barges they're all coming down here as you can see quite a bit of traffic on this canal actually so yeah that's the uh, that's the roof now it's Condor XL and there's the solar panel 100 watt solar panel connected to the second battery Go up and have a little look. I haven't opened the other windows yet, but oh, we've got some boot bags here. I forgot to show you these. These are like boot bags. So you can pull them up and put your shoes in. Velcro there to keep them down. These come with it as well. They're not extras. These come with it. And you've also got built-in LED lights underneath which is nice so when you're sitting here at night and you've got this on you've got some lightage under here so you can put like a chair under there and you've got like a little bit of shelter I've also got an awning that goes on it actually zips on see the zip on there can you see the zip there's a zip in there I don't know if you can see that on video it zips in there and the awning comes right out it's really, really, really big. It's quite a big awning actually. You can get nice table and chairs underneath it. Well, actually, if you go onto Instagram, if you go onto my Instagram, you'll be able to see a picture of the awning deployed. It's already, you know, got it all attached. One of the little trips that I was doing, but I've not got any videos of it. So, because obviously it's a new channel, so I've not took any videos of anything. So that's it up there. I wonder what that was then. I thought, what's that in the tent? Do you know what that is? That's actually a um, a rubber. A rubber cover for the zips so you've got the zips look, let's fall off that one now I've got to glue them on see the zips well when it's windy they rattle and they look you know they hit each other and you might think well what, what, what's the problem with that when you're trying to sleep and all you can hear is all these zips tapping against each other so I bought those rubber zip covers but they yeah they fall off they're actually in the pocket over there. One's fell off there as well. I've got to glue them on. But uh, you've got some windows there. They open up. They've, they, they've got like a little window shade, the same as the same as this, same setup as this with the poles. You've got a skylight, obviously with the bug net, same as they've got the bug net. You can open that and you can stand up there, and you can even roll this whole cover back. This is just a. This is just like a fly sheet that comes off and rolls over on the top. So you can actually, you know, you can actually stand up there if you want. Um, but yeah, I haven't really felt the need to do that yet, to be fair. But yeah, we've got a nice mattress in here. It's, it's quite a thick mattress. As you can see, it's, it's quite comfortable. It's all in there. It's all ready to go. And normally I keep my sleeping bag in here. But that's in the car at the moment. Because I was uh, using it in another vehicle of mine that I've been using. I've got a 5 Series BMW that I've been using to go a bit of car camping in as well while well, this has been having some work done. So yeah, that's the tour of the roof tent. So as you can see, it's pretty, it's a pretty good little setup. It's a pretty good little setup. Kind of go anywhere really if you want to. You can just sort of camp anywhere you want. But obviously you can't always deploy your tent. That's the problem. That's why you need really to be able to sleep in the car. Yeah, like I was saying earlier, I was actually planning on doing, I was planning on doing like a, a build inside. I was going to, I was going to like have like a platform going across there. But when you put the seats down and I was going to have a drawer underneath it and I've like 90% built it. But some plans have changed as things have changed. I've actually now got a new vehicle coming for a new build before I've even finished this one. So there's going to be a new build on the channel and I'm not really going to be using this one. 
I'm not really going to be using this one anymore. And there's a good reason, really. Um, well, is there a good reason? You might argue with me on it. What is the good reason? Hmm. Yeah, I've got a new rig coming to the channel, which I'll be doing a video on that soon. But I just wanted to do a video on this, just to show you what I've got currently, what I've been using, and what I have been using to go on my travels and some, have some little adventures and just explore. That's what I've been using. But I've, I've bought something, I've bought something else because this is now getting on a bit now and I've got plans, I've got plans to go places. I wanna go Europe, I wanna go, I wanna go to Ireland. I wanna go, I really wanna do Norway. I really wanna do Norway and Sweden and just wanna do that whole Scandinavia thing. And although I could take this, and this is not the most comfortable vehicle that I've ever used, it is supremely comfortable. Like, I can't find anything else that beats it, comfort-wise. But it's now got 150,000 miles on it. 150,000 miles. And it's now, what, 19, 18? It's like 19 years old. And it's been really, really reliable as well. I haven't had any problems with it. Hardly anything. I mean, what have I had to do to it? Uh, it likes batteries. It chews batteries up. Yeah, it seems to chew them up and spit them out. I've had three batteries on it in eight years, which is probably more than you should ever really have on a car. It's had a starter motor. Um, that's it. That's that's really it. I mean, I did a load of work on it when I bought it because it was a bit neglected when I got it. Because it's an autobiography and I bought it for a really good price eight years ago because it was my dream car. I always wanted one of these. I always wanted an L322 Range Rover ever since driving them when I was younger. And I wasn't disappointed when I got it. Um, and yeah, contrary to what people will tell you, they try to tell you that it's the most unreliable, unreliable vehicle on the planet and it'll break as soon as you drive it off your drive. That's not been my experience. It's been really, really good. But I think at this mileage and at this age, to expect it to continue to be reliable, I think I'm asking a lot because it is nearly a 20 year old car with 150,000 miles. So it is inevitable, things are gonna go wrong with it. So I think at this point in its life, if I want a reliable vehicle to take me potentially you know, to other countries and exploring the world a bit more, I need something with low mileage, something newer, and something with good reliability. So we're talking, yeah, we're talking a, a jack car really, aren't we? But I'm not gonna say any more because I'm gonna reveal it in another video. So yeah, hopefully you've enjoyed this little walk around. I know there wasn't really that much to show you because I've took most of my gear out of it. There's lots of stuff. I mean, I've got multiple stoves. You know, I think I've got a bit of a stove addiction going on. Uh, I keep I keep buying more stoves thinking, oh, I'll get something new because um, I want to try a different one because I want a stove for different things. You know, I've got a twin burner stove, common twin burner, which is great when I've got the kids so I can just cook two things at once. I've got a jet boil with a little pot support, which is great for me on my own with a little skillet. I've got uh, a Kelly kettle in case I run out of fuel and I can just get wood from anywhere. Like here now, I could have a fire if I wanted. I could just, I could just scavenge some bits of wood from the floor and I could make a fire in my Kelly kettle, boil water, cook food. Um, what else have I got? I've just bought a Coleman dual fuel petrol stove as well, which I haven't used yet. I've literally just got that running. I bought it second on an eBay, I've got that running. I've got an alcohol burner, so I've got a little Trangia as well, which I've not used yet. I've got a little wood stove, a little foldable wood stove. Can't remember what that's called. That's in my backpack. So yeah, I think I've got a bit of a stove thing going on. I, think I, don't, need, I don't think I need any more stoves. And now the twin burner, because it's so big and bulky, I don't really like using it, because I find it's just too big. And it rattles about when it's in the back and it annoys me when I'm driving. So that kind of just stays in the garage and doesn't really get used. But I've got, you know, I did have big plans for this car. I was going to do a whole build in the back and change loads of stuff, but I've just kind of kept it simple. So there's not really that much to show you. You know, I've got like a compressor fridge freezer. I've got my water. I've got my chair. I've got tables. You know, I've got a cooker. What more do you need? I've got a sleeping bag, which is in the back. What more do you need? 
don't really need anything else, do you really? I think we get caught up in doing too much and buying too much gear and never using it and never getting out there. So yeah, this is why this year I'm going. I've got a trip planned very soon. There's a trip coming up soon, so hopefully I'll be doing some videos on that. So on that, guys, I'm going to leave it there, I think. And um, look forward to showing you the next one. See you later.